Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah, we are continuing our series on providing free life coach training program for those who are interested in becoming certified life coach through Khalifa Education Foundation and Post Islamic Psychology Center. This is to help you to become uh, more attuned towards doing uh, facing the challenges of the Ummah and the uh, youth of today. Eh? So, this is based on our book, Positive Islamic Psychology, A Transcendent Model to Achieve Peace, Happiness and Success in the 21st Century. So, all our training will be based on this book, but we give you a lot of supplementary material and videos from many uh, other sources, so that it will be giving, it, it will give you a, a more holistic worldview of what kind of challenges you have, you are facing in the 21st century. I have mentioned in the earlier video that these challenges that we have, we can summarize the challenges of the Ummah into eight challenges. Eh? Uh, and this is what we need to do. That means if we say that the Ummah is facing challenges, say 1,000 years ago or 100 years ago, the challenges are radically different in the technological age and in a global, globalized world where everybody and everybody is interconnected through the internet. All right? So we have eight challenges that we have to face, like it or not. If we fail to, uh, to face these challenges, then this Ummah will then disintegrate. But if we are able to face these challenges, this Ummah will become a very strong Ummah and we as life coaches will then be able to mold and shape the younger generation towards living a full life of Islam, Iman and Ihsan. Eh? So, what are the eight challenges? I have completed the challenges on First, the challenges of atheism. I have given you some idea, about eight, nine videos explaining the whole spectrum. So we should not be apologetic that we are Muslims, we believe in Allah, we believe in the Creator. If they don't believe, uh, then we don't need to argue with them. We can show them the material that I have collected and there are many more material in the internet which shows that this universe cannot exist without a creator. This life form cannot exist without a creator. There is no way in terms of chance or probability of ever it existing without God. So then we have a very strong position eh, in terms of what we believe in and we can then elucidate this position and bring it across to the next uh, generation of young Muslimin and Muslimat who are facing these challenges in school, in high school, in universities, always bringing this idea of atheism as if that is the truth. That, that is actually a falsehood. All right, so I have elucidated over eight, nine videos. So the second challenge is anxiety and youth. This is the age of anxiety. This is a problem of youth all over the world, especially in developed countries. Countries that have uh, youth who have their belly full, who has gone through the best educational system, the best health system, the best food, nutritious food, the best uh, everything that you can imagine in terms of their need. But yet, they have anxiety, they have depression, they have suicidal uh, ideation, they have self-harm, they have so many psychological and psychiatric problems that is beyond imagination. So this is a very, very uh, difficult situation because uh, there are many reasons to it, but I'll show you one video and then we'll discuss this further, inshallah. place than it used to be. By age 32, 50% of the population might qualify for an anxiety disorder. I'm a 40-year-old man and a 12-year-old boy. One of my friends said, for people like you, we used to pour buckets of cold water on them as they lay in bed. That's what you deserve. Well, I mean, if they can fix their anxiety with a pill, that's just as appealing as discovering that you can make your dinner with a microwave oven. The country is bathing itself in prescribed drugs. 
or many, many unhappy people out there in the real world, they don't all have psychiatric illnesses. The ultimate risk, you know, is that we've psychiatrized the entire population. We've ended up in a situation where virtually everybody has some kind of disorder. And that's crazy. It felt like there was this volcano of panic juice coming from the stomach and then into the rest of me. It kind of feels like something's always chasing you. That you are always trying to get away or always trying to get somewhere. There's something always right behind you, coming for you. It's not a productive fear. It's more of a um, paralyzing fear. Well, th there's just everyday anxiety. Missing the subway when you're late for work. You're trying to get to an appointment and you can't find a cab. It's just the city is fraught with it. can't take a brain picture and we have no blood test to tell us, oh yes, this is anxiety. We depend entirely on patients telling us how they're feeling. Because we expect to be more happy and fulfilled than the average human life is going to be, um, we start to become open to the idea that our unhappiness is somehow pathological or, or a disorder and that it deserves to be treated. And that's a, a real modern phenomenon to take the complexity and enormity of human emotion and turn it into a, a treatable illness. It's like I can't participate in life. I'm too busy worrying. I don't sleep at night. Paxil works to correct this imbalance, to relieve anxiety. I think what's happened over the course of the last 30 years is a kind of perfect storm in psych psychiatric diagnosis. The most common symptoms include rapid heartbeat, trembling, sweating, tense muscles. People have to understand that these diagnoses that one hears on every street corner are diagnoses that are being marketed for commercial profit. They don't necessarily correspond at all to what your underlying problem is. There's a new proposal for a diagnosis of mixed anxiety depression that would be, I think, very much equivalent to the everyday worries, uh, tensions, stresses, problems that all people have. And this is likely to become, from nowhere, the most common diagnosis in psychiatry. My wife died on March 6th of this year. I had a grief experience after that. The symptoms I have couldn't sleep, didn't want to eat, felt a lack of energy, sad. Those are the symptoms of depression. Now, it used to be that we said that after a year of grief, if you still have those symptoms, then you have uh, a depression, not grief. What do we say now? We say if after two weeks of the death of a spouse, a child, or a parent, if you still have those symptoms, you can be diagnosed as having depressive disorder. So we see that today in the 21st century, we are going through the age of anxiety. Uh, whether you are a young teenager or even whether you are a toddler, <laughs> uh, a young teenager, uh, adolescent, uh, going through life, mid-age, old age, every one of them is merged in this depressive state. And why is it so? It is because anxiety is the age, in this age is the anxiety in the age of civilization. This civilization creates anxiety or glorify anxiety and create a situation where anxiety become a norm. All right? In the previous society, I mean, you are, you are faced with a saber tooth tiger, either you run or you're dead. All right? There is no two way about it. All right? And you can feel anxious only for a short while when you're in front of that saber tooth tiger. Other than that, you're happy, you're, you're with your family, grooming each other, uh, building up relationship, building up family, bringing up social contact, bringing up all the wonderful need of integration in terms of our life. But we are disintegrating every single factor that needs 
uh, that, that, that lead the support system to, for us to avoid being anxious and having anxiety. So this is a, anxiety is a, this is a disease of this 21st century civilization and Islam is the answer because we, we, we look in a more holistic approach in terms of our spiritual need, our emotional need, our mental need, our physical need and the societal need in which we groom together, grow together, deal up together, enjoy happiness and in sadness also. But we can support each other in a way that will be very, very useful for us to go through life because we know this life on this earth is just temporary, our anxiety is also temporary and we can, if we can then uh, mold our mind our spiritual, our SEMP, spiritual, emotional, mental and physical realm of our existence will then be free from anxiety and depression inshallah and through this program of positive time psychology and this life code training program will give you a lot of tips for you to be able to go through life uh, in joy, in happiness as well as in, in suffering and sickness in a way that is balanced and in a way that on the overall whole, your life will be a wonderful life of peace, tranquility, happiness, fulfillment, abiding by the grace, the mercy, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing our role as the sincere servant of Allah, his khalifa on this earth, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshallah. <laughs>